Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we're going to be exploring the Celestial Kirin Armageddon combo. Now I've wanted to play this combo for a very long time ever since Ugin's Conjuring got printed but the problem was that I could never think of a way to build this deck. I didn't know what shell to put it in but I think I finally came up with something today. We're not gonna try to go too serious with today's deck. I don't know what results to expect. But we're gonna play some red, white super friends because if you're gonna blow up all the lands on the board, I think it'd be pretty nice to have a few planeswalkers on the board as well to just control the game out from there on out. So as always, hit that like button down below if you're hyped for today's video and let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. If you wanted to pick up today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you'd like to join the marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon exclusive Discord server where we discuss deck ideas for future videos. So this deck is going to share a lot of similarities to that Boros Stacks deck we played on the channel several months ago. And that deck, as it was, already had a fine and good record. But let's see if the Celestial Kirin combo can make it a little bit better. Kicking it right off with the combo, Ranger Captain of Eos is basically just copies 5 through 6 of Ugin's Conjuring because it tutors it. So for those who don't know the combo, Celestial Kirin says whenever he casts a spirit spell, destroy all permanents with CMC equal to the casted spirit's mana cost. So, thank you to War of the Spark, we got Ugin's Contrate, which is a spirit that costs X. So therefore, when we have a Celestial Kirin, we can play Ugin's Conjurant for X equals zero. And uh, well, lands, they have a CMC of zero, so it's just gonna blow up all of the lands. We got some extra land destruction in uh, Stone Rain and Boom Bust as well. And you might be thinking, why do we wanna blow up all the lands? This isn't gonna hurt us as well. Well, we do have Darksteel Citadel and Cascading Cataracts, which are indestructible lands. And Flagstone's a trope care when it dies, you get to go tutor a planes and put it into play. So we don't mind blowing up our own lands. So this is basically gonna be like a stacks kind of thing where we tax our opponent's lands and blow up their lands so they can't do anything. In addition to, like we might blow up some of our lands, so we have some signets and stuff to make up for that. Talisman of Conviction and uh, Boros Signet so that we are gonna blow up a little bit of our lands, not all of them, maybe. We get to keep all of our lands if we have basically all the ones that I just showed, um, but this will make up for it. And the reason we do have a bunch of ramp is because we are a Planeswalker deck. Our main win con is nahiri Emrakul combo. Uh, so Nahiri is gonna go tick up, tick up, tick up, and then just minus, and then go search out an Emrakul that has haste and just swing it at your opponent. And that is like the main thing to do here. And those rocks will help us get to it on the third turn. And we got some more four drop walkers and uh, a Johnny Vengeant, which can also tap down lands and further our stacks plan if the opponent does happen to find a land after we wipe the lands. Can also be a removal and Gideon allies in a card just makes a board state and wins the game very fast. And then as our top end walkers, we got Gideon Jura to control the board because he forces creatures to attack him and he's very beefy and then just ends up minusing to blow up tapped creatures. And then Elspeth creates a giant unbeatable board state. And then Chandra the Awakened Inferno is uncounterable and gives the opponent emblems that are just going to slowly but surely drain them out. So with all that ramp and land destruction, uh, with all these walkers on the board, that should be a pretty potent plan. I'm a little bit scared of aggro, but we'll see how it does. We got a total of 24 lands. Aside from those 12 I showed earlier, typical Boros mana base, nothing too special. We don't have a lot of fetches because if you do end up blowing up your fetchables, then future fetches you draw won't do anything. So we got no fetches here. Let's move on to the sideboard. As always, if I do change it up, I will let you know right now. But we have two copies of Defense Grid for Counterspell decks because we want our land destruction bombs and our Planeswalkers to resolve. And then we have the removal package of two copies of Deafening Clarion and two copies of Wrath of God as a little bit of sweepers if the opponent is beating us down. Then we have a play set of Leyline of Sanctity as a uh, anti-thought seize and also anti-burn because those things will be a little bit annoying for us because we are kind of a slower deck. And then uh, we have three copies of Deafening Silence. That is our Storm Hate, prevents the opponent from casting more than one non-creature spell per turn. Anything that's trying to combo off, Deafening Silence shall wreck them. And then we have three copies of Rest in Peace because Soul Tie Self Mill is so big right now. It also helps against Storm and Dredge and anything of that nature. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Really quick before we get into the gameplay, it is time to welcome a brand new patron to the family, Chrome Drone. Say that 10 times fast. Thank you very much for your tier one pledge. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the marination. And with that, let's get right into the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. 
Got a game here again, it's Gyo, Gyo 315, and yes, we're going to be on the play with some Kirin Armageddon friends, and that's going to be a keep. We can go turn 3 Nahiri, or turn 3 Stone Rain if we want. Let's start on Dankstil Citadel, go, give the opponent the idea that we might be on Affinity. Oh, you have to go? Watch the rest of the game later on YouTube, GL. Well, peace out, Monsignor Geek. Thanks for chilling, have a nice day. Oh, of course. Of course they're gonna do that. So it's Jund. And Jund is a horrible matchup for basically everybody. Jund beats everything. And you can't deny that. And uh, Jund is one of the, um, the annoying parts of modern. You never, nobody ever was like, yeah, I'm going up against Jund. Like, no, nope. Jun's always just like dreadful and, and boring and they, they rip your hand apart with hand disruption and it's just awful. And no, nobody likes it. But Spikes play it because they want to win. But if they don't have an Assassin's Trophy for my Nahiri, then we're in business. But you know, they're Jun, so they definitely will. Oh, uh, yep, they just had a thought seize for Nahiri because we knew that there's never, there's never just one hand disruption. It's always multiples. It's always multiples. Yo, what, what you take, we top deck. What you take, we top deck. We take those. All right, take up. And let's discard Cascading Cataracts and we draw a Boom Bust. Ooh, spicy, spicy. All right, we might be in business. We might be coming back from this. Yeah, it's it's fair magic, but it's it's disruptive as heck magic. It's like it's like I'm not gonna let you have fun magic. That's what it is. Yeah, and before Lily of the Veil, we 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 all know Lily's coming out here, or just Maelstrom pulls Nahiri. There's a Goyf. All right, Nahiri can exile that. Yo, Stone Rain. So I can go Talisman Stone Rain here. I don't even want to exile anything. I want these cards. All right, Talisman. Oh, I kind of tapped wrong. I don't know why I tap like that, but here. All right, Stone Rain off their Overgrown Tomb. Leave them on just black red. Pick up on Nahiri. Let's say no. Oops. No, I wanted to say no. Dang. Welp. That's a bummer. I accidentally clicked yes, because usually no is on the left side. It's usually on the left side. Like, what the heck? That might screw us. Look at that. Now, now, now Nahiri's gonna die because of that. Or not because of that, but Nahiri's gonna die now. They had a bolt, now they're just gonna attack Nahiri, and Nahiri can no longer mine us. That's, that's a huge bummer. That just happened. And now they got their green source back and I can't boom bust it because I accidentally clicked yes and there's no way to reverse it. Maybe there was if I like clicked control, control Z, like maybe. And now they got infinite mana forever. Oh no, they're just killing, straight up killing Nahiri here. Yeah. Yo, there we go. See, you keep, you keep messing with the Nahiris. We're just going to get more. Bye, Goyf. Don't you have a second bolt, I swear. Okay, I'm just gonna play this. I want my sixth mana for Elspeth and whatever, because if they Lily and make me ditch it, I would be sad. Well, Ren gets around our Ponza plan, so that's, that's a thing. See, knew it. See, that good thing I played the land. Good thing I played the land. 
Well, our only hope is to get to this minus eight. Because they're at 14. They're in lethal range of it. That Ren is going to be hyper annoying, though, keeping our, our Nahiri down while their Lily gets up to minus six. And their Nahiri gets up to minus six fast. So I need another Walker here is what I'm trying to say. Okay, okay. Okay, I like that. I like that. So let's uh, bust here. Oh, wait. I forget. When there's a signet on the field, you can't auto tap. You got a manual tap when there's a signet on the field. All right, so let's bust. And yes, let's go searching with flagstones. Let's go get a sacred foundry. Tapped. Think of Nahiri. And pass a turn. So, alright, opponent, do you want to keep my Nahiri down or do you want to get a land? Oh, they just had another land off the top, anyways. What's W plus six? All right, give me a Gideon, Aaron, a Johnny here. Something. I need to pressure that Lily. That's not it. All right, let's discard that. There we go. There we go. Create an ally. Yeah, it's minus six to minus seven. Oh, that's... Oh, red and plus six. Yeah, I get it. And use an ampersand. Ampersand's easier to remember. And they keep hitting their lands without even... Oh, wait, they did take up red. All right. I swear, if you have like a five, six goif here, I'm gonna be salty. Because Liliana needs to get weakened. So we kind of win this this uh, Planeswalker war here because Nahiri will minus eight if they don't have Assassin's Trophy. Like, because Ren can take it down one at a time, but it'll be able to plus two, so it out outraces that. All right, so let's tick up with Nahiri. So they're gonna have to weaken Nahiri. Sacred Foundry. All right, well. I have to turn Gideon into a 5-5 five, five here and, and swing all at Lily. Because if not, all my lands are going away. Come on, Lily, take a hit. Take a hit. If Lily takes any damage, I just basically win here. Lily's their only hope here. Oh, no. Well, this is indestructible now, so nothing's killing Gideon here. They gotta, like, flash in, like, I don't know, an ambush viper? Like, I think Lily's taking a swing. A full force hammer swing to the nutsack. Rep decay, yep, okay, Lily's taking a swing. Now we're good, Nahiri's gonna, Nahiri's gonna ult. Now I feel safe to play this, this, uh, Sacred Foundry here, because Lily's not going to make me sack on my lands. They have to minus Ren here to ping Nahiri. They have to. They're forced to. I'll be so sad if I top deck an Emrigal. <laughs> Alright, dude, make your move. Make your move. You're not doing anything, so I'm pretty sure you have nothing. We might actually take a game off of Giant. I don't expect to beat them, 
But it would be awesome if we snuck one game out. Ren just counteracts our 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 uh, Ponza plan, and and then uh, Thoughtseize and Inquisition are just really really huge against us because we have some supporting cards like this that don't matter, but we have just a few things that matter, like our walkers, and they can just take them out of our hand, and then we're left with nothing but supporting cards. Oh, they're letting us untap with Nahiri. All right, let's go grab Emmy, the Emmy Award. And then I can just um, boom bust again and blow up all lands all over again. Yep, they scoop it. They don't even want to see Emrakul. All right. Let us bring in a Ley Line of Sanctities. Rest and Pieces are pretty good. They stop Ren from screwing us over. Um, Wraths are good. And, uh, let's cut, you know, I'm kind of tempted to cut Chalice because we're bringing in Ley Lines for Hand Disruption and Bolts aren't the biggest deal. Bushes don't matter. So I guess I'll cut those. I want my Land Disruption, my Land Destruction. I want my Walkers here as well. I'm kind of almost tempted to just cut the combo. Because, like, I need my Ramp into my Walkers. I need all my Walkers. I need the rads. I need the the disruption package. So I'm kind of tempted to just play the Planeswalker mid-range game. Is that crazy? It might just be. Because I still have Boom Bust to destroy all lands. So I still have a backup plan. Yeah, I'm going to cut the combo. It It might be crazy, but it might just be crazy enough to work. All right, let's do that. Renin 6 is broken as Oko. Not really. Okay, there's no there's no ley line, and I'm pretty sure we're getting inquisitioned or thought seized. But if we don't, I got turn two boom and I got a rip. And Gideon can keep a goif tapped. Or a Johnny. Alright, let's keep it. The only dead card here is Ugin's Conjurant. If that was like a ley line, this hand would be exiled. Excellent. Excellent. All right, opponent, just don't be lame. So don't, don't like, thoughts he's me here. It looks like they're mulliganing, actually. Are they mulliganing? I think they are. Yeah, they mulligan to six here. Don't. No, man. Just play a tap land in F6. No, don't shock it. No. Well, is it going to be rip or is it going to be boom? I would prefer to keep the boom. Oh, actually, they can't take it. It's a six drop. It's a six drop. They can't take it. So it's going to be rip here. Because they're not taking Conjuring. They don't care about that. It's going to be rip. It going to be a master of disguise for, uh, for Halloween or for when? Rip to the rip. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Stone Rain. Oh, this is great. This is great. Boom into Stone Rain. That's amazing. I just need them to not Thought Seize us. Because <laughs> they did it last game. They Inquisition in the Thought Seize us game one. I swear, if you do it again, I'll be salty. Yeah, it's so crazy. It might just work. Please. Just play a goy for something. Oh, thank you. Don't don't you dare. Oh yes, this is amazing. This is amazing. Boom. Blow up your black source. Ain't no Liliana for you. God seizes and whatnot. Ain't happening. And then if I can get out of Johnny, oh this would be excellent. This would be ex Oh they had no lands! They had no lands! This is awesome! Okay, stone rain your land. Oh man, and I have the mana for Gideon and a Johnny, and then I can play a 5-5 five, five Ugin's Conjurant. Oh yes. They just scoop. That was the most satisfying win of the day. That was definitely the most satisfying win of the day. We deserve that 100%. Oh man, I'm happy about that one. Screw Inquisition and Thoughtseize decks. Screw them.
Got a game here against Scooter, ha ha. And we're gonna be on the draw with some Armageddon friends. That is a lot of Gideons, and I don't think that's enough mana. Although I do have a ramp piece and a turn three boom. Um, I mean, I'm on the draw. If I hit constant lands, I'll get up to this Gideon. Part of me says that this might actually work out. I mean, they have a two turn head start on whatever they want to get going. And if they have an Inquisition and take this, I die. And if I don't hit lands, then I might hit more signets. I might hit like an Ahiri that I'll only need one mana for. Yeah, for some reason, I feel like this hand might work. Because Gideon's good at controlling the game too. So if it comes down to aggro, then Gideon should do a good job. Okay, I like where this is going. Um, not if it's Druid Vizier, because then we're going to lose. But I like where this is going so far. Okay, Burrs kind of counteracts our pawns a plan, but it's something. Yeah, exactly. All that stuff. What's up, Quirrell? Another bird. Dang, another anti Ponza card. Ooh, they're hitting their mana. Mono green. What is happening here? Paradise Druid. Yeah, they're just like mono mono ramp. Blue mana. What you need with blue? Drift of Phantasms. Are they like a high alert deck or something? Or or is this um uh unbound flourishing? Is this unbound flourishing? Blue Sun Zenith. What the heck is happening? Okay, well, I think I want to go... Well... I want to blow up a land, but at the same time, they have so much mana. I think I'm just going to go Nahiri here. And then I'll try to exile this Paradise Druid when it attacks or when it taps or something. Alright, let's discard one of these Gids. Okay, that's another red source. If I hit a land off the top, I can double boom next turn. I really want to start exiling those birds one by one, but I didn't want to minus Nahiri because then Paradise Druid would kill it. Oh, uh, I probably should have. Right, please just be a blue sun zenith or something. Okay, good. All right, good. Now it can disrupt them. Oh, I wish I had a Kirin so bad. Right, exile Paradise Druid. Play a Talisman. And let's boom. Destroy... Uh, I want a second red, probably. Destroy Flagstones. Oh, no, no, no. Don't destroy Flagstones. Hold on. Because I want to overload Boom Bust. So destroy that, destroy that. So if I draw mana, I'm 100% overloading this boom and just busting everything. I think they should change that around. I think that boom should be destroy all and bust should be destroy one. I think that makes a lot more sense. The Quatch. Alright, they're comboing. They're comboing. Ooh, yeah. I think I might just boom bust here. Oh yeah, it's happening. It is happening, boys. Let's bust. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, they're searching. They be searching. They find the Boyds. Destroy the mana. I'll use flagstones. I'll say yes. I'll go grab Sacred Foundry tapped. Take up Nahiri. I think at this point I can probably ditch Elspeth. There's an inspiring vantage. That's the land I need for Gideon. And now I can just use Nahiri to start exiling birds.
Lumbering Falls. It's weird. We got four mana, yet Inspiring Vantage is still entering untapped here. Come on, attack Nahiri. Do it. Tap it out. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna wreck their mana even further here. So let's go... Exile does watch Recruiter, so it stops pressuring us, first of all. Oh wait, I have a Signet. Gotta tap manually. One, two, three, four, five. Gideon Jura. Let's Midas and blow up a birds. And then with a combination of Gideon and Narset, we can just start dealing with all their birds. Because Gideon's going to force them to attack him. And they're going to be tapped out. And then Gideon and Narset can just Midas and kill them both. They had nothing to do. Oh, a stone rain. That's solid. All right, you're forced to attack me, opponent. Now I shall stone rain your land. Did I just call it Narset? I meant Nahiri. They're going to void slime. Solid. You can void slime my ult on a planeswalker. That's pretty funny. Alright, let's discard Nahiri. Get a dank steel citadel. Let's just play it, whatever. Getting the walkers all mixed up. Alright. We're gonna take up Narset. And then use um, Garrick to uh, destroy creatures. Here's the Phantasm, cycling to find a blue sun zenith again. How adorable. How adorable. Minus. Yeah, they scoop. <laughs> They're gonna blow up all their birds. This is great. I'm a sucker for blowing up everybody's permanence. <laughs> all right. So, I probably want Wraths and Deafening Clarions here to destroy their mana dorks. And then I probably want... I feel like Deafening Silence is going to do something here, but then again, they have birds, so maybe I'll just keep Chalices. They're comboing off some way. Um, They're so land destructible. I just... I guess I'll keep Stone... I guess I'll keep the land destruction plan in here. But I want the Walkers too. I want to keep the Gideons. What am I taking out here? I really don't know. I want to keep that. You know, maybe we're not winning with this Gideon here. I mean, we could, but I'd rather go on the just destroy everything you got plan. What if I cut two Kirins and one Conjurin and just still keep the combo, but not like as big? I guess that makes sense. I can run it like that. Be happy with that. Let's do it. I don't know what their deck is trying to do, but we'll find out probably. We'll, we'll lose this. You wait. <laughs> They're going to get to do their thing. I know it. Uh, Chalice uh, is getting a little bit too late, but oh, I really wish I had red mana here because I got double stone rain. I feel like I'm going to keep it just because I got Wrath. And Wrath could clean things up. Loud noise incoming, probably. Nope. It was quiet. You got the Boyds. Come on, red mana. Ooh, Kirin. Yeah, Ponza is fun, Ernst one. What what are you trying to do here? Is it like Yi on the Wanderer Bard? Ooh, I got my mana. Okay. I was just gonna like uh, Chalice on one here, but I think I want to get up to this Wrath now, so I'll just play the Talisman. I'll Wrath next turn, and then I'll play the Chalice, or start blowing up lands. But I'm kind of, like, for some reason, expecting, like, a real Mystic or something. Like, their deck is wild. It's weird. Getting in for two. Don't pass. 
Oh, they're leaving a frilled mystic, aren't they? All right, well, I'm gonna wrath here. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, then you're losing two mana. Negate. Okay. Oh, wait, I have the combo in hand. And the combo is good here because it doesn't blow up anything of mine except this is going to replace itself. Okay. All right, all right. I think I'll go for that. That seems good to me. All right. The negate won't work here. We got to have a disdainful stroke or something. All right. This in theory works. Let's go for it. Please, 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 please. Don't, they don't know what this does. Just let it go. This is literally trash. Yep. And now you see the combo. <laughs> Blow up all the lands. Give me my sacred foundry. Flagstones. Yep. All right. Let's go and fetch our sacred foundry. No shocks. Pass turn. I have a lot of stone rains. Dang, I didn't get the chalice out on time. Come on, give me a wrath. Oh, I got the wrath. I got the wrath. And now they're down to nothing. All right, let's get in there. I mean, they could have like a, a spell pierce. All right, let's do it. I'm wrathing. Please. Yeah, no permanence. We did it, boys. Yeah, they scoop. They scoop. Yes. It's so, it's very rare when you get to end the game of magic with your opponent with zero permanence on board. And we just got to do it. Oh, I'm so happy. Got a game here against Kako Lopez, and we're going to be on the draw with some Armageddon friends. And that's going to be a mulligan. Doesn't have enough mana and a lot of clunk. That was mull. This one has a chalice on two. It's got a talisman, so I'll keep it. And I think I'm bottoming Chandra here because I'm so far away from it. And I'm just a conjurant away from blowing up all lands. So that's cool. Ooh, okay. Well, I really want land destruction here. Okay, I got my mana, so at least a Johnny can tap a land for now. They just have natural Tron, don't they? Okay, sure. I have my own chalice. I didn't care about that. Don't you dare have natural Tron, dude. Why do they always have natural Tron? Why do they always just have natural Tron, dude? I don't understand. Now it's just game. Why do they always just gotta have natural Tron? It just keeps happening. Well, our main deck is pretty set up to beat Tron, so I think I'm gonna leave it the same. We have, what is it, like 16 ways, 17 ways of destroying mana. So if we lose this, this would be insane. Okay, but they had Chalice, so it's probably Eldrazi Tron. Would you like to go first? Yes, sir. Okay, double Chalice is not good. It's not because they have their own Chalices, so they obviously don't care. However, if we do get one more mana off the top, we do have, like, Nahiri and, like, Ajani going, which is, like, not bad. But I just feel like I want, like, land destruction. I think I'm gonna mull, because these chalices are basically, um, it's like I'm mulled to five here. Oh, man. See, like, if I had a red source... Okay, so Chandra's basically dead here. I have the combo. I just don't have mana. I think I got a mold of five. Okay, I'll keep that one. I have the turn two um, boom bust. Let's keep that. Throw away Chandra. 
And I think I'm throwing away Conjurant. As much as I love to Armageddon, I think I need Nahiri to get something going. And I, I think I really want to boom bust them right away. There's his tower, nothing. Okay, look at that. I bought him the Conjurant and there's the Karen. Okay, I can afford I can afford to signet here probably. Or you know what? Nah, let's just boom. Alright, you're go. You're go Bell Striker. The problem you've been having with Turbo Pig is that everything you want to do the deck realistically, too many archetypes to fight against right now. What? Alright, Signets, go. Aw, oh, stop hitting your mana, dude. Okay, there we go. Stone Rain. Ain't letting you Thought Nod steer me. Now, please stop hitting your land drops. No, Warping Whale. Dang, now they're gonna Thought Nod Seer and take my Nahiri. Because like we always say, every time there's a Thought Nod Seer present in a deck, it's always in the opener. Jaws on one, okay, they didn't hit their land, thank goodness. Alright, Nahiri. Let's take up and discard our Chalice. Another Karen. All right, come on, Conjurant. Before they draw a Thought Not Seer, just give me the Conjurant. Ballista. Ooh, that can keep a land tapped right there. If I minus, then Ballista's gonna kill it. Yeah. All right. First things first. Let's actually tick up Nahiri here, and discard a Kirin. Cascading Cataracts, all right. A Johnny Vengeant, let's keep a land tapped. And then I can Emrakul next turn if they don't deal with Nahiri. Yeah, they scoop. All right, sweet. This is so our matchup, I swear if we lose this. Come on, good openers, good openers. Chalice is pretty dead here. What do I want over Chalice? Probably Wraths. Let's bring in Wraths. Because they're going to have Eldrazi's. You want to make the deck good against everything, but there's always like two archetypes to just wreck you. Yeah, just blue eye control is going to walk over you no matter what, King Magic. You just got to deal with it right now. It's, the problem is it's not nerfable. Okay, there we go. We have the Armageddon combo. Let's keep it. Slam, keep. Now, don't you dare get Natural Tron, I swear to goodness. This is turn three. Turn three Kirin combo. Don't play a second Tron land, dude. Thank you! Alright, Signet. Oh, I need to hit my land also. Okay. Oh, they just, they're getting out, they're turboing out their, their Eldrazi here. Oh, do they just have a Reality Smasher? Karn. Oh man, now I can't use it. That's a bummer. I needed to land there really to start stone raining, but that sucks. Now I'm gonna get Reality Smasher, Thought Not Seared here, one of the two's happening. They're just going to go find a liquid metal coating. Yeah, that's that's a huge bummer. Now it's just over. Man, well that really sucks. That was such an easy matchup for us too because literally we're land destruction against Tron, the deck that doesn't like to get land disrupted and, you know, they just had to nut off. Got a game here against Jolly Man 1 and yes, we're going to be on the play with some Armageddon, Kieran and friends. And I think that looks like a keep to me because I got the turn two boom into the turn three stone rain. If I hit my land, Kieran. Kieran doesn't do a whole lot in his own, but a hill giant can win the game. Don't count them out. 
All right, so let's start on Sacred Foundry. Tapuru, here you go. Ooh, Colonnade. This is gonna be a very long game, guys. Strap yourselves in. Got another colonnade? Just don't have a fetch land. Dang it, they had a fetch land. That sucks. Now I can't destroy anything here. Well, I have a turn to do some ramp shenanigans, so let's get out of Signet and pass. There's the ram. So if they're not holding up a Dovin's Veto, or a um, Mana Leak, or Remand, or a um, Negate, or a Logic Knot, we can blow up another land. Basic Mountain, so they're Jeskai. Alright, well I'm gonna blow up that way, Source. I don't know what you're doing, but that's gone. They get a Batter Skull. Cascading Cataract, so I can do both here. Alright, let's boom. Blow up that land. And let's Stone Rain that land. And now we get out Gideon, and Gideon's gonna start doing the things. Ooh, they whiff their lands? Nice. Nice! Alright. Now we get down Gideon. We blow up Stoneforge. Zero permanence on board. That's what I like to see. And if they don't have Path to Exile, Gideon gets to do his thing and start attacking in for six. And they scoop it up. Zero permanence on board. Oh man, we're doing it. Okay. So against Jeskai Stoneblade. Probably want defense grids, and I can cut Gideon Druid. Gideon Druid did kind of do something there, but in this kind of a matchup, I don't expect him to do much. Like, Batter Skull's vigilant, so he can't really do anything about that. Um, creature with the sword on it, like, it, it'll only work if it's like a sword of feast and uh, a sword of uh, war and peace, or like a sword of uh, light and shadow, which. They could have a Sword of War and Peace, but I don't know. I just, I don't like the Gideon and the control matchups. Chalice is not awful. It's not awful like a Falafel. Can I take out Chalice? I've always been leaving Chalice in in these matchups, but maybe I should just try keeping the Gideon and cutting the Chalice. But the fact that they have Path to Exile means they probably just leave it in. Like, hmm. Well, I guess Gideon gets the batter skull off of Nahiri's back, so, you know, I'm gonna try it. Chalice doesn't really do a whole lot. Like, what do they have on one mana anyways? Opt and Path, and like, that's it? Maybe Bolt? And those spells aren't, like, the most impactful to us? So, like, I guess they could help kill our- Bolts could help kill our walkers, but I don't know. The Blurry Legend 420. Would be cool to play a couple cards and liquid metal coating to destroy lands. Yeah, I thought about it. Okay, that's a defense grid. And I have the turn two boom again, so I'm gonna keep it, but I think I wanna slam defense grid as quick as possible to make sure that my Nahiri's resolve. Ooh, boom into stone rain again. The one-two punch, land destruction, I like it. However, I probably still want to slam defense grid as quick as possible. They could manage to get out to ferry, um, but that would tap them out and allow me to destroy another land. And to ferry doesn't do a lot. Draw some cards, but they don't have mana. Like, that'd be cool. If they tap out here, I'm 100% just going to blow up lands. Yeah, they, they just passed. 
All right, well, I think I'm slamming defense grid here. They got to counter this. They can't let this go. Yep, they're, they have to counter this. They're forced to. They're just, they're just going to helix us. Okay, I could have blown up a land. All right, well, now I'm going to start blowing up lands. It's the same trap is pretty beefy. I don't think I can I don't think I can win anymore. This is trying the same trap is pretty good. So my only way of beating Geist the Saint Traft is to get out a uh, a blocker like a, a Celestial Karen or a Nugans Conjure and hope they don't have an answer to it. That's all that's all I can do. Alright, well now I don't have red mana, so I can't do it anymore anyways. I can't I can't Nahiri, I can't I can't do anything. Well, now I know what I need to bring in Wraths. Because now I know what kind of a deck they are. And I'm dead in two swings. Because Geist is uh, 3 mana, 6, 6 hexproof. Well, uh, Gideon. Gideon can get around this if, if, I, uh, if I draw Gideon. And if they don't have Cryptic Command. Well, last chance to see if there's anything that could save us. There's not. All right. Well, now I know I need to bring in Deafening Clarions and Wraths because that thing is a problem. So bring in Deafening Clarions, bring in Wraths. I'm sorry, Gideon, but now you're on the chopping block, even though you do redirect the Geist, but I got to kill the Geist. So let's do it like that. Let's cut one Kirin and one Conjurant. Go down on the combo, but still keep it in and uh, run it like that, I guess. But now we're on the play, so we can have the turn two boom and the turn three stone rain again if we draw it. Um, you know, you could probably run Pillage in this deck if you ran um, Rugged Prairie, although it's going to be difficult to get the second colored source since we have 12 colorless sources. Would you like to play first? Yes. Okay, well, we have the Wrath. We got the Deafening Clarion. We can ramp into a Nahiri if we draw another land. I guess I'm going to keep it. It's a nice little... Turn three this and a turn four that. All right, come on, boom bust. Stone rain's cool. So if I whiff my mana, at least I'm still doing something next turn. They probably have to leave up a counter spell here. And can't let me blow up mana. All right. Well, I, f I, I'm kind of doubting they have a counter spell here. I don't know. In the last game, all they had was a helix. They were holding up. Like, if I get to resolve a Gideon here, I'm probably winning. I mean, whatever I play, like. I don't know. I feel... I'm feeling Gideon here. I don't know. I'm feeling him. I'm feeling it. I'm vibing with this right now. Yeah, of course. Nothing Nothing I played was going to resolve there. Something had to get countered. Something was going to happen. Elvin's Veto. Painful stroke. Well, if I played a stone ring there, it would have resolved. Go ahead and play your Geist of Satan Traft. Hello. Surprise Mud. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, here's the Geist. So I can Wrath here, and that's safe to do right now. Although... Although, I kind of really want to blow this up. Um, get them off of white mana. It's probably smarter to just Wrath, but... You know what? 
I want to disrupt their mana here. Hope they whiff a land drop or something. I don't know. And another one anyways. All right. Come on, just play, play Stoneforge Mystic. Come on, dude, just tap out. Come on, tap out for that Stoneforge. I know you want to. I know you want to. All right. All right, they're Field of Ruining. I know they don't have a Spell Pierce. They, there's no way they're running Spell Pierce. I'm not, I'm not buying it. There's no Spell Pierce. I'm going to Wrath here. Ain't no Spell Pierce. All right, got rid of that. And now I have Walker after Walker after Walker to drop. If they drop another another one of those things, I'm just going to straight up Deafening Clary on it. Oh, there's a Stoneforge. All right, I think I'm going to Johnny Helix that. I can't let that thing get out the Batter Skull. Or you know what I might do here? I think I'm going to Johnny tick up on their plane so that they can't cheat it out and they won't have five mana to hard cast it. And then from there, I'll Deafening Clarion and then just keep their mana tap down. They get a Batter Skull. Yeah, okay, so I think I'm just going to Johnny tap down their planes. Right? Yeah, I think that's what I'm doing. Don't tell me you have another Disdainful Stroke or a Negate. No way. There's no way you got a second Disdainful Stroke here. There's no, and there's no way you're playing Negate over Dome's Veto. Force of Negation? Oh man, now I think we're losing. It's just because of the fact that Batterskull is vigilant. That's the only reason. Because Nahiri only exiles tapped creatures. So it sucks that the thing's vigilant. And it only exiles tapped artifacts too, so it doesn't even hit Batterskull. So Batterskull is just the bane of our existence. Because only like Gideon only hits tapped creatures too. I should have just deafening Clary on the Geist, but I wanted to make use of the mana. Alright, well, I gotta look for another Wrath here, so let's go for uh, Nahiri. Pick up on Nahiri. Hello. Dad's coffee. Thank you for the follow. All right, let's ditch a redundant Nahiri. Play a tap land. Pass turn. Yeah, forcing a triple color deck is pretty ambitious. Well, now Nahiri's dead. And uh, Daphne Clarion does not deal four, deals three, and even if I did kill it, they pick it up and replay it. That thing is so difficult for us to beat, and I actually cut Gideon's, remember? And now without Gideon's, I don't think there's any possible way. Now they have this I gotta kill, like, yeah, it's over. There's nothing I can do that can that can recover me here. And even if I, like, do get, like, an, um, an Elspeth Suns champion to, like, stall the board, they're gonna be gaining a million life, and they're gonna be flying over top of us and killing Elspeth. And Chandra won't do it. Wrath won't do it, because they just pick it up and replay it. Colony is a problem. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. All right, well, counter spells are difficult. You really gotta have that, um, you really gotta have that defense grid on curve. Got a game here against Dirtle23, and we're going to be on the draw with some Armageddon friends. I'm going to keep this just because of the Stone Rain, and hoping that I can top deck a Planeswalker. I have like 10 Planeswalkers in the deck, so I should be able to draw one. Another land is cool. I wouldn't mind a Boom Bust. A Boom Bust would be pretty neat. It's the best card versus blue-white control. It negates all instants and counter- Oh yeah, that's right. Wait, does it? How does Ubin Mask negate counter spells? Let me see. I have to take a second look at it. Whenever- If a player would draw a card, that player removes that card from the game. Each player may, may play cards he or she remove from the game with Ubin Mask this turn. Ooh! Oh, look at, look at what we're going up against right now. Look at what we're going up against right now. What do you know? 
All right, well, let's boom, destroy Dark Souls Citadel and Hollowed Fountain. Did they shock? They didn't. Are they going to counter it? Yes, they are. All right, I might just concede and just play another game. Like, I don't want to fight Blue Eye Control. Nobody does. Okay, so it's uh, it's stone, it's stone forge mystic. It's uh, it's stone blade. All right, well, let's attempt to stone rain again. See if it resolves. Probably won't. But it's probably getting spell colored here. Looks like a spell caller to me. Mana leak. Okay. Yeah, I'm never resolving a single spell this game. Stick ball rest knows. He's been through the same things I have. Well, they countered two spells. Are they going to counter Nahiri? My guess is yes. Ooh, they're not going to counter that, though. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're going to counter that. Uh-huh. All right, here we go. Is it time for a crazy walker that I can't beat? Once upon a time, was, let me guess, Stoneforge Mystic? It's Field of Ruin. All right, yep. What's up, Future Skeleton? Happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too, Future Skeleton. Welcome to the stream. Ooh, Chalice of the Void's cool. All right, let's go with Borosignet, or Borosigne. Borosigne and Chalice on one. Then we get down Chandra, and hopefully Chandra just gives them enough emblems to win the game. Unless they have Stoneforge and race us with the sword and a colonnade. Yep, JTMS. Alright, they're gonna brainstorm. Now they gotta have the, the Stoneforge here. It just has to happen. Ooh, they didn't. Oh, there's a Kirin. All right, well, I know what I'm doing this turn. Boom. Take that. My gift to you. Enjoy it. Well, three ball might be better than chalice in this deck. What's three ball? I don't know what three ball is. I'm trying to remember. Oh, Trinisphere. Oh yeah, that would be pretty cool. I did play Trinisphere in uh, Mono Blue Ponza and Blue Red Ponza. Um, I could see that. It's an okay card, but it's it's good against Storm. But like decks like this can deal with it. So I, I think that I'd rather prefer I'd rather play Chalice. Whatever they do, I know they're killing Chandra here. It would be magical fairy tale land if I was able to untap with Chandra here. Ooh, we might be living in Wonderland, boys. We might be living in Wonderland. If I top deck an Ugin's Conjurant, this is definitely magic fairy tale land. If I top deck Ugin's Conjurant here. Alright, let's go, dude. It's the brainstorm with Jace. Come on, dude. Give me that. Give me that. Oh, nope. All right. Enjoy your emblem. Eat it. Um, I feel like there's no reason to play Kira in here. I'm just going to save it as a surprise. These Chandra emblems will do all the work. Yep. Once upon a Tibby. Gets another colonnade. They're gonna try to race. They might start just going at me now, trying to race these Chandra emblems. They're gonna brainstorm again. 
They basically dug half their deck deep. Remember back in the day when damage could be redirected to walkers? Yeah, those are some good times. Everything that said target player meant target player, redirect to walker. That's what it used to be. And remember back in the day when you geist somebody's geist with the legend rule? Chandra and Eidolon were so good then. Yeah. Eidolon was a walker killer. I used to use Chandra Pyromaster to kill walkers. Or to keep them down at least. One point at a time. Guess Chandra to two. Come on, Kirin. Oh no, it's another land. I guess I'll play Kirin. Maybe it'll force them to do something about it. But now it kind of tells them what plan I'm going on here. It's kind of cold in here. I'm going to go turn the heater back on. Okay, they're down to 10. Got a few turns left. My Celestial Kirin flies, so it can chump block. And they didn't mine his Jace on it, so they're probably just going to path it. But they can't path it because I have Chalice on one, so I'm likely going to be able to chump block and give them another Chandra emblem. Yep. Getting in with that calling on. Well, I'm going to chump. This Chandra is so good. Dude, Russ, you need to start playing this Chandra more often. Can't be countered. That text is like our lifesaver, dude. That is our lifesaver against this. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, let's go on a sideboard. Defense grid is coming in 1000%. And we're going to cut these gids. And uh, run it back like that. Let's do it. You've tested with it a lot. It's a nice ramp target. The 6cc is a, really a challenge. I mean, not too bad if you're playing ramp in, in like certain kinds of ways. Like if you're playing a ramp deck, like if you got 24 lands and some ramp, like maybe if you're running like Sakura Tribe Builders and like Utopia Sprawls and stuff of that nature. Your red white prison deck plays two. That's a good call right there. It's a lifesaver card. This this has been one of the best cards that I've played with in the past like year. It's been one of the better cards that came out in my opinion. All right. Well, Emrakul's a dead card in this opener. Um, I think I. Do I keep this just because of Stone Rain? Probably not. I mean, I do have Ramp. It worked out for me last time where I kept a hand that had Stone Rain and some Ramp just because I can cast whatever walker I draw. But then again, I only have one source of color here, which means I still can't. So I think I'm going to mull. That one I will keep. And I think I want to keep this Chandra because it's my only way out here. And I'll throw away a Dark Steel because I think I want my colors here because... Uh, they have revealed to us, um... Oh, this is each opponent, dude. You can't get around that with a ley line. Um, because they have Field of Ruin, they can disrupt my red mana, even though I have a Signet. Okay, that's gonna be discarded with Nahiri. Well, I like the fact that they wasted a slot in their deck right now, so that's good. All right, Boros Signet. Are you actually countering this? Ice Fang Kotal. You want to play Resident Evil 4 for the 100th time? Dude, I used to speedrun Resident Evil 4. Um, I had like a top 10 time in that game before. Um, it was on, um, the Xbox 360 version a long time ago, dude. I used to, but that was before the minecart skip was found, but I used to speedrun that. Yeah. 
I played that game many times over. <laughs> Maybe. I got, I, like, I was getting super good at the Dittman glitch. Oh, do I have a, oh, I don't have the Condrant. No. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to resolve my Nahiri. Pick up and ditch this Emrakul. Oh, I couldn't draw a card, so I basically just discarded Emrakul. I'm okay with that, though. I can also minus an exile their ley line, but I really don't need to. Serum Visions. They're lucky I don't have a chalice. Top five games of all time right there. Yeah, I could probably agree with that. Resident Evil is just it has so much replayability. So good. I'm a scrub. I love the Red Nine, but as a speedrunner, I gotta say the striker is the most useful weapon. Um, well, since discard since that does nothing, I guess I'll just minus on this Ice Fang Kotal. Um, and then I guess I'll just go Talisman into Bust or Boom or whatever. Or maybe I save it. Maybe I save it. Maybe I save it. Or you know what? Probably not. I'll destroy their green source, probably. I probably should have blown up their colonnade, actually, now that I think about it. But I just didn't want them to have triple blue for, uh, for, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Here's the command, but they, they'll still have a blue regardless. I should have just blown up the celestial. All right, I better top deck a land here, dude. I better top deck a land. RA4 is fun. I did not speedrun Resident Evil 5, though. I sp oh, there's my mana. There's my mana. Atta boy, deck. Atta boy. Yeah. Good boy, deck. Good boy. Eat that. Ha! Your ley lines do nothing. They don't do anything. And I hope you realize that now. Realize your failures. Also, please build a new deck because nobody wants to fight this. <laughs> I'm sorry for talking trash on, on Bant slash Blue White Control if that's your favorite deck. Because it's personally, in my opinion, the best deck in Modern. And that's been my opinion on it for the past two years. So... I mean, I like the deck, and I would play it IRL, but it's evil, and you gotta admit it. <laughs> so I'm so happy. Big Mama Chandra coming through. Definitely would love a second one, but I wanted to diversify the Planeswalkers. That's why I put in an Elspeth. I just wanted to have some, have fun with this, have fun with the, some diversification, but Big Mama Chandra is the way to go. Got a game here against Cole, and uh, yes, we're going to be on the play with some Armageddon friends in Modern, and we have Boom Bust on turn three. I'm going to keep it. it. It is awkward that we got two colorless lands here, but if I get one more land, I get on Hiri on turn three, at least. And if I whiff on lands, I just bust the land, or boom a land, or whatever. Drags the Citadel go. Opens us up to the most potential options to be disguised as. Opponent could think we're on Urza. On a, not, no, Urza doesn't play Darksteel, but like Affinity. Something like that. Once upon a Timmy. Alright. Prime time. So we're going up against Amulet Titan. Another great deck that we can uh, disrupt with our plan. If some mine just don't have... Oh, they had the Amulet. Just had to have the Amulet. Okay, I'll take a Talisman. Talisman's good. Just don't have Azusa here, please. Don't have Azusa, that's all I'm asking. Don't have a Simic Growth Chamber also. Your fan broke, summer will be fun. It's summer here? What are you talking about? It's winter. 
What is it a different... Oh, wait. It can't be winter on all parts of the world at once. Dang, that's... Th I never thought about that. My mind just got blown. Southern Hemisphere? Yeah, my mind just got blown. I've never thought about that before. I have never thought about that potential. Okay, well, they're, they, they're just taking down their gemstone caverns, so I know they got a bounce land. Alright. Let's boom. Destroy land. Destroy land. I wish Nahiri didn't exile a tapped artifact. I wish it was just anything. All right, well, let's get out Boro Signet. Let's boom again. Oh man, you know, I wish I could save it to bust, but whatever. Gotta disrupt them while we can. They just scoop? Why? Like, literally, why? <laughs> we didn't present anything that can kill you. All right, I guess that's, I guess they call that a rage quit, kids. All right, let's run it right back. I don't really need anything here. Brazil. I thought it was, like, cold in Brazil, though, because it's, like, down there, like, closer to the South Pole. Like, I mean, I guess we're kind of close to the North Pole, but, like, oh, yeah. It's kind of, like, in the middle. Yeah, I could see that. I expect it to be very humid there. A lot of jungles. Oh yeah, Brazil is like the after after the United States. I think next is like Canada, and then after Canada is Brazil. Yeah, so it's like a lot of a lot of people from Brazil watch me. Oh, the opponent just scoops it up. They just hate land disruption. All right, well, I, we I know we just said it, but that's what you call a rage quit, kids. Before we get into the sped up rounds of the video, I would like to remind you that if you were considering purchasing today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's resume the video. Hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. We like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. So jumping right into the first game, we're going up against Teamer Delver. Very spicy deck, really interesting. But what I was able to do here is I have the Karen in hand, all I need is a Conjurant. So this next turn coming up, I use my um, Sunday Canyon to crack it to really desperately try to find the Conjurant, and I find it. And I'm able to play Conjurant, put it on zero, blow up all their lands, or play the Kira and put the Conjurant on zero, blow up all the lands, and they just insta-scoop. They didn't even see how we're going to win. I guess maybe they saw the Nahiri there. Um, but yeah, so we go into the next game and they have the Delver and then they have a uh, Dreadhorde Arcanus, but they luckily for a while they don't have a bolt until like the very end. Um, but in this game, I'm just really trying to get out that Chandra. They counter my Nahiri because of course they are, they're a blue deck. And so I'm just trying to get to this uncounterable, um, Chandra and I just can't find red mana to save my life. And so that's the game. And so we go on to game number three, and my I have a Wrath, so I keep it, but my one source of mana that I, that I really need to get down is this Boro Signet. But they happen to have the Spell Snare at the ready, and then, you know what? I just don't find even a third land at all, so I guess that's a pretty decent way to lose the game. Um, so they end up taking us down because we don't find mana, and that's the way the cookie crumbles all the time here. Um, so we go into the next game, and this is against uh, a very interesting um, eight rack deck. Now, eight rack decks are usually mono black, but his was blue black, and uh, we ended up seeing what he was running uh, for the reason that he was blue black, and it was drown in the lock. And I guess that's a very like interesting and like possibly decent choice for for eight rack because. Um, like you're able to make them discard a bunch of cards so that the drown in the lock effectiveness goes up and then there you go. So it's a pretty decent spell, but I would just stay mono black and stay consistent. But what I'm able to do in this match is blow up the lands a whole bunch of times because 
Like, it's so weird. Like, I found, like, the entire playset of Celestial Karen and the entire playset of Ugin's Conjuring in this match. So it's very unordinary, and I definitely did not expect to find the playset of both of our combo pieces in a single game. That's just, that was just pure luck right there. But it was a little too much of them, a little overboard and a little redundant. And really, when you have too many of that same combo, it starts to just not really do anything. And what really got us was that nether spirit they had. So, like, they were able to, that, that nether spirit is, if it's the only creature in their graveyard, they can get it back um, from the graveyard to the battlefield over and over. So if I were to swing into it with the Kirin, they just block it, it back, block it, it back. And I can only have one Kirin out at a time because they are spirits and they trigger off each other and they're legendary too. Um, so they'll one Kirin will blow up the next and then the one Kirin will blow up the next and so on and so forth. And that's the problem with that, so that I couldn't only, I can only get one out at a time. Um, but the next game, we bring in Leyline of Sanctity, and they just can't do anything about it. Like, they they have the rack, but they I'm keeping cards in hand, and I have Nahiri, and I have Karen beating them down, and I'm destroying. I just keep finding land destruction, and there's really nothing they can do about it. They try to fight their way back in, but we got them. Then we go into the next game, and uh, really hoping for that Leyline and opener again, because 8-Rack really cannot beat, um, cannot beat a Leyline. But I don't get it in my opener, but I get a pretty decent hand anyway, so I end up keeping it. They try to Inquisition us. Same thing that happened against Jund earlier, but they can't take Boom Bust because it is um, six mana. And we're able to blow up lands, and then now I'm just looking for some things to do, and I really have nothing to do, but I find the Kirin, and all I need to do is find the Conjurant. But I keep finding land destruction, and that's pretty decent. And then I end up top decking the Leyline, and I'm able to get out the Leyline. And then I end up finding, I believe there's, there's a point where I do find the Conjurant, and I'm able to start blowing up lands. I play in a Hiri, dies to Hex Mage, but I'm able to grind them out with just a Hill Giant, because I keep blowing up other lands and dying their mana, and there's nothing that you can do when you have no mana. So GG to 8 rack. I think, dude, like if you're watching this video though, you should probably just stick to mono black. And here we go on to the last sped up game of the video. This is against uh, mono white death and taxes. And uh, so here's something I forgot because I haven't brewed a, a modern Ponza deck in a hot minute and I forgot about Aether Vial. Now Aether Vial is the biggest threat to Ponza decks because, you know, we destroy lands, but Aether Vial gets around that and does not care at all. So what you should really put in this deck is um, a braid. A braid is is really important, or you know, some kind of artist, artifact disruption. I think a braid should be the ver the most versatile you can get. So you can blow up Aether Vial, and it also doubles as being a creature removal spell. So I'd highly recommend that because Aether Vial decks are the biggest threat to Ponza. Um, so we're actually able to take a game down. Uh, oh yeah, it was this one right here. Spoilers. Um, because they, I, I like, I have Elspeth and I have Gideon. I have a lot of good things to do. I can wrath their board. They end up getting a huge board if I'm able to wrath it. And then Gideon just controls the game. And then I'm really just spending the whole game trying to cast this boom bust. And I eventually get to a position where I can actually cast it and Armageddon all of the opponent's lands before they're able to destroy a few of mine, of course. Um, but then and Gideon ends up grinding them out. And then, uh, we ended up taking that one down. We go on to the next game. And in the next game, it was pretty simple. I was trying to like wrath and stuff and all that good stuff. And uh, what happens is they're aggroing, aggroing me out like crazy while I'm trying to just like stabilize. And they have like restos threatening us. And I have Nahiri and I have a Johnny coming up, which could control the game. But if I just needed them to not have a second resto and they had a second resto. So what are you going to do about it? So yeah, I would definitely say you need to prepare a little bit more for Aether Vile matchups. So we ended up with five total wins. It was funny how much we made people rage quit with this deck. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> for the cube next stream, yo. Thank you so much, son, for the thousand bits. I really appreciate it. Can we get 10 duckies in the chat for son? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really helps out a lot. Thank you for the support. But we must resume the intro, and I will thank you again in a second. Um, wait, this is the outro. So this, oh, you might hear some singing. The neighbors are singing right now. You might hear some singing in the background. Um, but yeah, the, the deck was a lot of fun, and it seems pretty decent, but there's a lot of things that you could try for this deck. The deck is not limited to what you see on the screen. If you wanted to build this deck, you can mess around with it like crazy and try so much stuff. 
like Chandra Wait, Awaken Inferno, I think definitely needs to go up in numbers. Perhaps two, maybe even three. I wanted to diversify the walkers just for fun to get a nice little mix and see what works. And um, honestly, we don't really need Elspeth that bad. We don't really need Gideon that bad. We don't need like a Johnny Vengeance that bad. Nahiri Emrakul is important and Chandra is important. That's all I can say. And I would say that maybe you want to run some amount of Wraths, like Wrath of Gods on the main board. Maybe definitely Clarions on the main board or something like that. And I would say that definitely a huge problem was Aether Vile Dex. I think you definitely want to run some amount of a braid. I think it'd be really important. And another thing that um, the uh, humans player named off of their meddling mage was Pillage. And uh, that's a that's another that's a good question right there. Is Pillage good for this deck over Stone Rain? Um, now the thing is, we have a lot of colorless lands and like white lands, like we got six basic planes basically because it's four flag stones, two planes, and then four cataracts and dark soul citadels. And there's a lot of situations where we just like either don't even have colors or only have like one red source. And so it'd be difficult to consistently cast a uh, pillage, even if you ran rugged prairie and rugged prairie could even screw you sometimes because there's some times where you're just blooded with colorless lands and you only got one color land. And then if that one colored land is a rugged prairie, you don't have the mana for it. It's just going to screw you. So I, I wouldn't go. I, I would just stick with Stone Rain. You can try some other things if you want. Like maybe you don't want to go in on that plan. But I think that going turn two, boom, turn three, Stone Rain is a nice disruption plan. And then getting out a walker on an empty board is great. So I like that. I like it. But you can mess around with it. Do what you want. But I think this works. Like the, the whole package of this, this, and Talisman and Signet. Uh, made it so safe to just like um, wrath all the lands and and I like that I like that package a lot um and honestly another thing that you probably don't need for this deck is actually the Kirin combo like Kirin and Condren like if you wanted to run the shell of like oh this is a red right boom bust deck like you can do that and um because like this wasn't like super consistent it was awesome when it worked and it did work like a little bit more than I thought it would um but it's not like insane so yeah mess around with it uh do what your heart's content anyways i hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you think about the deck in the comments down below just leave any comment really it really helps the algorithm helps the video get out there and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest the gameplay every other day let me know what deck you want to see in the comments down below and go check out the social media links are down below as well as a link to twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams we currently stream every saturday monday and wednesday at 4 p.m pacific time Hope to see some of you guys there. Thank you to all the sponsors, the patrons, and the Twitch chat. And we are going to get on out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.